Yeah. So the broad question I want to ask as a team of economists is to understand what motivates citizens to go to the streets to protest, especially in a regime that's authoritarian and then they want to sort of gain political rights from the, from the ruler. What we want to understand is that for decades, economists have this general thoughts that people go to the street to protest because they're strategic about it. They, they, and in particular, the strategic consideration is that I want to go to the street to protest potentially because other people are going as well. We use sort of the backdrop of the Umbrella Revolution, and every July 1st, uh, there's a big protest or there's a big march on Hong Kong, uh, on the streets of Hong Kong of citizens going to the street to protest and gain political rights from the, from the Chinese government. Two years ago, we as a team of economists run a little field experiment uh, in, in this context where we asked the citizens in Hong Kong, these are university students that we're focused on, of whether, how many people they expect to go to the streets in 10 days in July 1st to protest uh, uh, against China. And we then randomly provide the truth information to a subset of students two days before the protest. So some of the students, they believe move up, some of them believe move down, and two days later, we see whether they go to the street to protest or not. This provides a, a, a very sort of sharp test to the theory of whether when you believe more people are going to the street to protest with you, are you more likely to stay at home or go to the street with you? So what we find is that if we tell you information about how many other people plan to go to the street to protest, and you actually thought, okay, this is a lot more people to go to the street than I thought, then you are actually more likely to stay home. You're essentially thinking, okay, other people are going to do the job. I don't need to be there anymore. I can just stay home to, 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 to wait for other people to protest. And vice versa, if we tell people there are actually a lot less people to plan to go to the street to protest than you expected, they're actually more likely to go to the street to protest uh, the day after. So, so we, we economists call this strategic substitutability in the sense that we, actually the game of protests are strategically looks like a game of free riding, a game of public goods, which challenges our conventional wisdom uh, and, and provides hopefully some useful uh, data point to, to, for, for theorists, for empirics to understand this question. Whether I'm more likely to go to the street protest when I believe more people are going or when I believe less people are going, it's going to give you completely opposite strategy, both for the political party when they want to mobilize people and also for the government if they want to suppress a protest. And that's sort of roughly what we see in a spectrum of political advertisements in Hong Kong where some political party use the language such as tomorrow there will be uh, like 50,000 people on the street and it's going to be fun, it's going to be great and you should join us and some other political party use language such as it is really important that you as individuals should go and we're sort of, we don't have enough people and you should feel obligated as a Hong Kong citizen, that's your civil obligation to go. So these are very almost opposite languages and sort of which one is more effective, I think this is an empirical question. Mm -hmm.